Hello, and welcome to Worship with Christ Church United Methodist here in Tucson, Arizona. I am Pastor Beth, and I am so glad you have joined us today for worship on this Sunday. We are preparing to celebrate the reopening of Christ Church United Methodist on Sunday, May 2nd, 2021. If you are one of our regular online attenders, we will continue to bring you the same outstanding pre-recorded worship in the same way and place each week. However, if you are interested in attending our indoor service, please take a moment to register using the link on our homepage titled May 2021 Worship Registration so that we can save a seat for you and your family. Our services will be at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. in the Christ Church Sanctuary. I cannot wait to meet you face to face. And now, let us worship together.
please join me for the call to worship. Whatever is closed, let, let God, God open. open. Whatever is missing, let God provide. Whatever is dead, let, let God, God revive. revive. Like, like the disciples, disciples in the days after the resurrection, let, let us meet you face to face, face, to face and, and declare with our own lives, Christ, Christ is risen. Thank you. My dear friends, we have come to that time in our service where we unite our hearts and prayers together as a people who pray. Will you join me in prayer? Breathe on us, breath of God. We are a people shut in, shut out, shut down, hushed by the realities of the world. We long to put our hands directly on the mystery, to touch, feel, see for ourselves, be in the moment with you. Here now in the quiet of this time, those places and people in our lives longing for your life-giving breath of peace. Christ among us, you know our lives, our deaths, our pains, our praises, and you say yes. Yes to our uncertainty, yes to our unknowing, yes to our questioning, yes to our wondering, a yes that leads us to one another in ever deeper and strengthening ways. Listen to those places where we have run aground on the nose of life and speak a yes to us once more. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Shape us in every way to the fellowship of faith where your grace, forgiveness, and redemption redeem us to life together with one another and with you. Living, meeting, loving God, these things we ask as we find ourselves face to face with the resurrection. Jesus who breathes into us life again and again. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from John 20 verses 19 to 30. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. 
Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. In study for this week's message, I found myself blown away by the artistry of the Gospel of John. John is, in my opinion, the most complex of the four Gospels. And in these short 13 verses, Jesus fulfills all kinds of promises for the future church. He begins first by fulfilling the final promise he made to the disciples just before his arrest, saying, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. I am going away, and I am coming to you. Here in these verses, we see Jesus declare, Peace be with you, as he comes once again to be among his disciples. Next, Jesus brings about a new creation in the disciples, breathing on them 
the same formula for creation we encounter in the beginning of Genesis. Then Jesus establishes the work of the fellowship of disciples as bringing about forgiveness. And finally, Jesus establishes the church as the community which believes in the resurrection. It is a fitting starting point for our Easter Tide or Sundays of Easter sermon series, The Ships of Faith. Something of a misnomer, as most people when hearing the word ship will probably think of a vessel, boats, air, and spaceships most likely come to mind. This is appropriate as the qualities of faith we are going to address over the next few weeks absolutely do transport us to new life and different ways of being. And I was surprised to learn that ship is a suffix, a word that can be added to the end of other words to transform their meaning and purpose, such as resurrection is a word that transforms the meaning and purpose of our own lives. When we use the word ship as a a suffix, it can mean these three additional things, the state or condition of being something, the position, status, or duty of someone or something, the skill or ability of someone. And so you might be wondering, Pastor Beth, what does this tricky lesson in the English language have to do with John 20, 19 through 31? Well, we find the most important work of God's recreation in Christ, the work of the church, begins with one of the most important parts of Christianity. It also involves the suffix ship, fellowship. We encounter here for the first time in John's gospel, the community's encounter with the resurrected Lord, not an individual's encounter. Chapter 20 of John begins with the private encounter of Jesus, the one-on-one significance of meeting Christ face-to-face. But this chapter ends with the critical element of fellowship. It is only in fellowship together with one another that the community of disciples believes, rejoices, and receives God's new creation, and finally receives the commission or the mission of the church. It is only in fellowship that Thomas the twin discovers what it means to grasp hold of the crucified Christ risen and alive among us a model for our own faith. It is only in the fellowship of one another that God's ultimate work, forgiveness, that restoration of all creation through redemption, it is only in fellowship that this is possible. Jesus' resurrection work, or the birth of the church as that community that lives out the resurrection message, begins in community in fellowship with one another. The disciples are together. That is where Jesus meets them. When Thomas is in with the community, that is when he makes his startling proclamation of faith that moves us from the rejoicing of the other disciples to the foundational statement of our religion when we see Christ, my Lord and my God. It is only when Thomas is there in the fellowship, that he is able to take hold of Jesus and touch and see what it is that God has done here. Rather than creating individuals as God created individuals in Genesis, God's act of creation here is to form a fellowship of people. People united not by what they look like or by common things they own, but by believing together, by receiving the breath of life itself, this breath of life that will allow the church to live and thrive and grow from generation to generation. We are here today because of this movement of fellowship When Jesus stood among his disciples, despite their fear, despite locked doors, despite the trauma of what had happened, despite their grief and despair and doubt, here Jesus is among them saying, peace be with you. Jesus' life and 
and ministry illustrates for us what it means to follow Jesus as disciples. Jesus' resurrection teaches us what it means to be a church, a community bound together by our common experience of encountering the one who breathes into us the breath of God, the one who declares to us in the face of all that happens, peace be with you who insists we not look away from the evil things humans are capable of doing to one another, but rather lovingly, forgivingly, confronting those wounds and insisting that God will heal, that God is doing a bigger work, a redeeming work. And the fellowship, our community with one another, will give us the strength to endure as that work comes about. Partnership. So what does fellowship mean? Well, in this context of the Old Testament, it means partnership in work. We partner with God as God partners with us. Fellowship is the present and future kingdom of God. Through faith, we know as surely as Thomas knew that when he declared my Lord and my God, the resurrection began this work. This encounter of peace is only the beginning of transformation. This call to forgiveness is not an overnight solution that makes the world a better place, but it is the work we are committed to doing gradually, consistently, on and on. And we know that when we die, the work of our lives as Christians will continue. When our church changes, the work of God will continue. We are part of an eternal community that stretches back to this very moment in the Gospel of John and on into the future that not even our children's grandchildren can imagine. Fellowship with Christ means we step in as Christ's closest companions, these first disciples, sharing with Christ an inward communion, which carries with it the blessing of forgiveness won by God's grace, established by the new covenant sealed in Jesus' final act of love as he poured out his life for us. Fellowship in Christ means living, suffering, dying, inheriting, and reigning with Jesus himself. It means sharing that same life with one another. Fellowship for us means a fellowship with the Spirit, that breath of God, fire of life, whirlwind of change that sets our faith ablaze with passion, compassion, so that we can fashion new ways of reaching one another and hearing one another when they reach out to us. Fellowship also means the partnership of faith that requires us to share, share good news, share grace, share pain and suffering, share the goods we have, share revelation, and share forgiveness. And finally, fellowship means that we have become part of and created as a new family, one that shares together in the parenthood of God. All of this, all of this is here in these 13 verses that close out chapter 20 of John, where John's gospel engages once more with the symbolism of Genesis and breathes into the fellowship of disciples, the new creation of the living body of Christ at work in this world. Our inheritance as a community of faith is founded on this moment of fellowship. So I offer you this question. How are we engaging in this fellowship life that declares my Lord and my God and recognizes the risen Christ at work in the world? Amen. Mighty God who brings life and hope out of death and despair, Help us to hear the invitation Christ offered to the disciples. Peace be with you. Make us bold to grab hold of the risen Christ. May we offer our gift this morning, not to the church historical, the church that was, but to a church that is becoming, 
that is still being born, that Christ will bring into the future, may our eyes and ears and hearts continue to receive the living Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Christ has risen while earth slumbers. Christ
And now, friends, please receive this benediction. And may God raise you from all that would entomb you. May Christ call you by name and go ahead of you. And may the Holy Spirit empower you for all that is good. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.